Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I'm discussing what I feel were the worst CPU and GPU purchases of 2018. Now, some of these products should have never existed, and some were just a bit pointless, and others made promises that they didn't fulfill. But before we get to that, a very quick ad from today's video sponsor, Corsair, and the new Hydro Series H115i RGB Platinum All-in-One Liquid Cooler. This is Corsair's best ever liquid cooler, both in terms of performance and aesthetics. The 280mm radiator is cooled by two ML Pro RGB 140mm fans capable of spinning at up to 2000 RPM. The cold plate and pump design have been optimized for greater performance, while the upgraded RGB lighting on the pump head looks incredible, and using the IQ software can be synced up to match your build. For more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so I'm not gonna mess around. Let's get right into it with the worst GPU product released this year, possibly ever. Back in July, we got our hands on the DDR4 version of the GeForce GT 1030. And boy, oh boy, what a heap of garbage that thing was. It's one thing to try and release a really, really crappy product and try to flog it off, but it's a completely different thing to pull a bait and switch on your customers. NVIDIA were basically committing fraud in my opinion with the GT 1030 DDR4, and I'm quite surprised more media outlets didn't make a fuss about this one. Uh, one big YouTuber even blamed the consumers, uh, claiming that if you're dumb enough to buy a brand new entry level graphics card, then well, it serves you right. Anyway, for those of you who missed the drama, NVIDIA released the GT 1030 back in May of 2017, and it was a pretty weak entry-level offering, but it was good enough to play titles such as Rocket League, Fortnite, and CSGO, for example, at a respectable resolution such as 1080p. Basically, if you're a parent who isn't massively into computers, and you want to buy something cheap for little Billy to play Fortnite with his buddies, then a $70 GT 1030 will fit the bill nicely. The problem is, as of March 2018, Little Billy could end up with a GT 1030 that will average 66 FPS in Fortnite, or one that will average less than 40 FPS. And they have the same name, they look the same, and they're the same price. What happened here was Nvidia quietly introduced a DDR4 version in March that had 65% less bandwidth than the original DDR5 model, 16.8 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, down from 48 gigabytes per second. So unless you knew what to look out for, you'd be none the wiser, and even tech savvy users got caught out as they didn't even know there were two models, so didn't bother to check the memory type, just assuming they were all GDDR5, as they had been for 10 months after the initial release. Oh, and before moving on, there is something that I would like to just make crystal clear. This isn't on NVIDIA's board partners. They can't create a graphics card that's out of spec, out of NVIDIA's spec. Uh, many argued with us that this was on Galax, as we used a Galax DDR4 version of the GT 1030 for testing, or it would be on anyone else who made a DDR4 version of the GT 1030. But guys, that's not how this industry works. NVIDIA calls all the shots, and if you don't comply with their demands, you get cut off, and for most of these AIBs, that would be a death sentence. NVIDIA created the DDR4 version of the GT 1030, and they are pretty much entirely responsible for screwing over the poorest and often most vulnerable PC gamers. From one disgusting anti-consumer act to the next, the good guys also played dirty in 2018. Now, before getting into this one, I'll just say that I'm not interested in arguing about which one was worse, who was more naughty, NVIDIA's GT 1030 DDR4 version, or AMD's RX 580 that's really an RX 570. I seriously don't have time for fanboys defending either company's actions, especially when they've done something this anti-consumer. You honestly just become as much of a problem when you defend these dodgy products, at least in my opinion. Now, I have no doubt that NVIDIA's GT 1030 affected more people, and in my opinion, it is a far worse product. But the Radeon RX 580 2048 SP is still garbage. It's a rare anti-consumer move by AMD, and well, we have to let them know that we won't stand for it. Basically, what AMD did here was take the RX 570 GPU and then rebrand it as an RX 580 2048 SP. So they're basically calling an RX 570 an RX 580 and well, that's just a flat out lie. 
At least AMD did slightly change the name, or at least they added to it. But still, the product name very much suggests to buyers that this is an RX 580 and might not be any different to any other RX 580. Maybe the seller just added 2048 SP to make it sound more fancy. Let's be honest, how many buyers even know what 2048 SP means? And how many of them know that the RX 580 is meant to have 2304 SPs or stream processors? Now, you could argue these models are only being sold in China, but I don't know why you would. Last I checked, Chinese consumers are still people. They work for their money, and ripping them off is no different to ripping anyone else off. Also, if you hop on eBay and search for new RX 580s, on the first page you will be met with a 2048 SP model at around the same price as the fully fledged 2304 SP models. Granted, they are only being sold under Chinese brands, but it's still possible to get your hands on one, and sellers can get away with calling them RX 580s if they choose to, and if caught out, you don't really have a leg to stand on. So, we strongly feel that AMD needs to be called out on this one, and hopefully we won't see this kind of crap again. Though I did say that after they accidentally called an RX 460 an RX 560. Hmm. Well, maybe AMD can work their naming schemes out in 2019. Fingers crossed. Next up, we have the Intel Skylake X Refresh, one of the biggest snooze fests of 2018. Earlier in the year at the Computex trade show, the Battle of the Cores was in full swing, but while Intel was, well, I think Tim put it, they were in fantasy land with their 5 gigahertz 28 core Achilla type CPU, AMD was actually showing off, well, an actual real product that they released, I think it was just a month later. We still haven't received the 28 core monstrosity from Intel that requires a completely different socket and likely a motherboard that costs more than an RTX graphics card. So I guess we have that to look forward to. What we did get was a range of new 9th gen high-end desktop processors. And apparently they're so good, Intel was able to skip the 8th gen models. The only problem is they aren't that good and they don't even deserve the 8th gen branding, let alone the 9th gen. These are just the same old 7th gen Skylake X parts, but with a soldered TIM that actually manages to make them worse, at least for extreme users, you know, the kind of users that they're targeted at. The Core i9-9980XE, for example, the $1980 model, yeah, it's only $20 cheaper than the 7980XE, but I'll get to that in a moment. The 9980XE runs so hot when overclocked, it can't actually be overclocked as far as a delidded 7980XE, and you can't delid the 9980XE without destroying it. So that means enthusiasts are better off buying the older 7980XE and do what enthusiasts have always done with Intel CPUs, at least for a few years now, and that is delid them. All that aside, the biggest issue is the pricing. Intel still in la la land when it comes to pricing. Or maybe it's the consumers as Intel still seems to be moving what they can make. Anyway, anyone willing to properly evaluate their options will seriously question why they would spend so much more on a Skylake X refresh CPU when they have what are arguably better options from AMD at much cheaper prices. Right now, the Threadripper 2950X costs $900 US, while the 1950X can be had for an unbelievably low $600 US. Then on the other side of the fence, we have Intel's 16 core, a 32 thread 9960X, and that costs $1,685 US. So just shy of $1,700 US on that one. So in short, Intel recycled their CPUs and even their pricing from 2017. And it has to be said back then they weren't really competitive, at least in my opinion. So the new Skylake X refresh parts really are pointless. And I'd say worse than that, they're actually a really bad buy. Okay, so I suspect almost all of us, certainly the vast majority, will agree that Nvidia's DDR4 stunt with the GT1030 was bad. AMD's choice to release an RX 570 under the RX 580 branding should be frowned upon, and Intel's Skylake X refresh is extremely disappointing and represents very poor value. Where I feel quite a few of you will be divided is on this nomination, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 and 2080, as some of the worst GPU purchases of 2018. So let me try and clarify a few things here. At the MSRPs, which a few models are selling at, the 2070 and 2080 aren't bad buys. Certainly not the most exciting products to be released this year, but 
for the most part, they're a little faster than the outgoing Pascal parts and are now available at the same price. But even so, two and a bit years later, that's not exactly progress, but I suppose with AMD nowhere to be seen, it's hard to bash Nvidia for giving us almost nothing extra. Frankly though, we could take them or leave them. Not really fussed one way or the other. Personally, I would have been just as happy if Nvidia went on selling Pascal at a slightly discounted price. The problem I have with these new RTX GPUs is that initially they sold for at least $100 US over the MSRP. And this made the RTX 2070, for example, 20% more expensive than the GTX 1080. At the time, 1080s were dropping in price, some as low as $430 US. So there were some serious bargains to be had, and yet many people were actively avoiding them as the newer RTX models came with the promise of phenomenal ray traced graphics and big performance gains with DLSS. Problem is, if you paid $600 US for an RTX 2070, you were massively overpaying for GTX 1080 Lite performance. This is because ray tracing basically doesn't work on the RTX 2070. It's just nowhere near powerful enough. Hell, it barely works on the 2080 Ti. Then you have DLSS, which looks to be just as useless at this point. And yes, I know, Battlefield 5 performance has been greatly improved since the initial release, but as Tim found, it's been achieved by downgrading the game's graphics to enable those gains. And ray tracing still has some serious quality issues. And let's not forget that the game support list for ray tracing is also extremely underwhelming. In the case of Battlefield 5, given what we've seen thus far, I'd personally rather just disable it and enjoy a 50% performance boost. Playing on an RTX 2070 at 1080p with an average of about 60 FPS just can't be compared to playing at 1440p with over 80 FPS. Ray tracing just isn't worth that kind of performance and resolution downgrade. Of course, ray tracing is an optional feature. You don't have to use it, but this was the key selling point of the new RTX series. And without it, well, you basically just have a fat Pascal GPU. Not exactly, but sort of. And yes, we know that ray tracing is the future of gaming, but having gamers pay a premium to pave the way for a new feature they can't really enjoy now isn't the best way to go about getting it. I'm sure it works for Nvidia though. So in short, gamers chomping at the bit for a new graphics card in 2018 were sold a false reality with the RTX 2070, and unfortunately some paid a serious premium. You could certainly argue that the RTX 2080 was even worse as it was well overpriced for a much longer period of time, and even today it generally costs more than what you were paying for a GTX 1080 Ti prior to the 2080's release. So the 2080 is pretty bad value in that sense, but I have honed in on the RTX 2070 given the laughably poor support for ray tracing, and that was a technology that was used to heavily promote the product and generate sales. So 2018 has been a bit of a frustrating year in the PC hardware space, though it has also been quite exciting at some points. So while some early adopters have been a bit burnt, or those going after bragging rights, uh, there have been some great value options as well. AMD almost got away with a clean rap sheet in 2018, and had they not released the dodgy RX 580 2048 SP graphics card in the Chinese market, uh, we'd really have nothing bad to say about them. Their heavily discounted Ryzen processors, along with the RX 580 and 570, uh, the real RX 580 and 570, They've been big hits this year. Oh, and there's also been some insane Threadripper deals getting about as well. I'm sure some of you will disagree with me calling the RTX 2070 and 2080 into question, but I feel Nvidia has taken advantage of gamers with the new RTX series, particularly the 2070 and 2080, which really offer nothing over the two-year-old Pascal parts they're replacing. I was a little tempted to include the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition, simply because of the alarmingly high failure rate and for the way Nvidia has handled this situation, but I'm still on the fence about that one. And while we did have a 2080 card go all Space Invaders on us, uh, we yet to have an issue with a single RTX 2080 Ti model. Granted, our sample size has only been a few cards, but I think overall your chances of getting a dud are pretty low. And it really has to be said that the 2080 Ti is just a beast. It enables an amazing 4K gaming experience, uh, one that we've never seen before, at least in tiles that lack solid SLI support. Of course, there's also now the Titan RTX, which is... Probably the worst value GPU to be released this year, but we haven't seen that one yet, so we don't really know what it's capable of, though we have a pretty good idea of what to expect. But anyway, I'll hold off till we have some solid data. Then we have Intel's Core i9-9900K, which is a terrible value CPU, but also a very powerful CPU, so I'm a bit torn on that one. The 95 watt TDP spec has caused problems, and the principal technology report was a dirty pre-order tactic from Intel, and we certainly don't want to see that repeated. All that said, the 9900K is still a beast and technically a better CPU than the Ryzen 7 2700X. Again, world's worse in terms of value, but 
technically a better processor. So that being the case, it's not one of the worst CPUs released in 2018. If it was only as fast as the 2700X or slower, then sure, it certainly would have made this list. What probably should have made this list were a number of Z390 motherboards, in particular the budget models. We thought the entire point of the Z390 chipset was to signify that boards using it were 9900K ready and optimized for the 8-core CPU. In other words, they had a capable VRM with adequate cooling. With the exception of Gigabyte's lineup, this wasn't the case, and all other brands just rehashed their entry-level Z370 boards and improved margins. We saw a horrible VRM throttling on all budget boards from MSI, ASRock, and ASUS, rendering them pretty much useless for the 8-core processor. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Uh, if you like the video, well, you know what to do. If you dislike the video because you bought an Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA product this year, <laughs> then you also know what to do. And of course, if your opinions uh, differ from mine in any way, then feel free to let me know about it in the comment section below. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you appreciate the work at Hard Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.